There it is. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming out. Um, <clears throat> this is our second uh, Unity Talk session. And so tonight we have Brooke Elaine, and she operates a business called Red Roots. Is that correct? Red. Where Red Roots, Red, <laughs> Red Roots Wellness. And she is essentially a conscious living and conscious dying uh, doula. Is that the way you say it? A doula? I'd, I'd heard the term in terms of a midwife, you know, that helps birth. It makes perfect sense to have someone that helps at the other end. And so she's, she's deeply involved in, in helping people uh, really enjoy the, any part of their life, but especially when we start getting towards the, everybody's final destination. So uh, she works with in integral wellness. Uh, she's an end of life coach. She does energy healing sessions, Reiki, sound healing, aromatherapy, and or shamanic healing. So I have a feeling that's the short list. So I'll just shut up and let her begin. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all for being here this evening. Um, I'm here to talk about the best three months vision plan and um, what that's about. So the best three months vision plan is a hero's journey, if you will, uh, a vision that one takes in any time of their life, um, in any health of their life as well. Um, pertaining to the end of life. Honestly, none of us know when, it, when it's our time to, to go, to continue on. And the best three months helps for us to um, bring awareness to death, bring awareness to conscious living and conscious dying, and discover the options that we have for comfort. And just like Phil was saying, we have um, doulas that welcome life in. Um, death is a bookend of life. And so if we have the choice to really create a comforting, loving, nurturing space for us during this time of passage, um, why not? So um, I have a little PowerPoint presentation. This is a, a visual something to also keep me on track as well because it becomes quite vast. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about it. And um, so welcome to the best three months vision plan. And um, to kind of set up a bit of a structure for the evening's um, unfolding um, what to expect is some connecting and grounding um, awareness and living your best life, how this program can really um, enrich our lives to, to live vibrantly um, in celebration of life, um, remembering the rite of passage, um, bringing beauty and awareness to the process of dying by discovering what your preferences and options are. Um, and then a peek into the reflection questions. And this is um, a six to eight week program um, that I'll be working with you um, to process and um, sending you reflection questions to think about and to ponder on um, and discover what, what that is for you, and then meeting up each week to discuss what you have explored and discovered about yourself and to help navigate through um, what we call the domains of life. Um, and then um, connecting and offering how to um, connect with me and get a little more information and um, also, um, there's other supportive modalities that I use as well. Um, as Phil had mentioned about um, 
when we get into these states of having um, energy work sometimes helps us move through and process these um, I've never used one of these before. <laughs> so, um, so um, yeah, the modalities, the hands-on work that can be helpful in processing some of these intense thoughts, emotions, experiences, and to also help celebrate as well. Is it, I, I'll, I'll take any feedback I can get. Oh, okay. Okay. Ah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the feedback. Okay, I would like to walk us through a, a grounding meditation if you would like to participate. participate. Um, please feel free to do so or not. Hmm. Begin by shutting down the eyes and allowing the day to fade away, coming into the present moment, into this space here together, into breath, to your breath. And to your heartbeat. <clears throat> Inviting you to put a hand on your lower belly. Um, where your thumb reaches your navel and your pinky reaches your pubic bone and allowing it to fully rest and relax and be cradled, supported by your hand. And bringing breath to your belly. Breathing in spaciousness. Allowing your intestinal tract to rest and relax as it effortlessly provides you with nourishment. A place of stability, a foundation, creativity, a space that is capable of holding all parts of you, all of your thoughts and emotions, Inviting you to bring a hand to your heart. And breathing breath into your heart space. And this physical muscle that pumps blood throughout your body, regenerating and recycling life force. Imagining the front of your heart and the back of your heart, and the sides, the top and the bottom, and the very center of your heart. Allowing it to rest and relax as it effortlessly provides you with life force.
And breathing spaciousness in and around the space that holds your heart. A space of love, a space of knowing. Bringing breath and awareness to your brain. Allowing it to rest and relax. This amazing center of electrical firing that holds our thoughts, our dreams, our visions, imagination, a sensory intake functioning. And as it rests and relax in your skull, and trusting in its life source that it provides. And bringing spaciousness and a vastness that is capable of holding all of you. A place of wisdom and intuition. And when the moment is right for you, I invite you to gently open your eyes, slowly taking in the space that we are held in here today. Welcome to the present moment. How do we live our best lives? Um, This vision helps for us to plan and prepare for the sacred passage we all must take. In participating in the best three months vision plan, there's a great outcome of bringing complete awareness, presence, and choice to your life at this very moment. Connecting with these sources and discovering what our inner knowing is, we know what's best for us. Discovering what that is, how we would like to be comforted, who would we like to be there with us, What kind of environment would we like created around us? Um, But what's truly important to us? And in this hero's journey, I will ask you to imagine that you are going to pass. You are going to die in three months from today. What are you dying from? And how will that change your life? What would you what would you cherish the most? What would you honor the most? What would you do 
with your life in the moments that you have the ability to be with yourself and others? Would you travel? Would you be with family? I mean, what would you do? The world is, is open and available to fulfill your heart's desires. So this really, really brings the idea of, of death into reality. I think a lot of us think like, oh, death is far off or someday or, you know, when, when the kids are old and grown up and I have grandkids. And um, yes, that's, that's wonderful. And we all hope for a long, fulfilled life. And... Um, also, we don't know when death calls, when it's our time. And in this work of bringing awareness to death and the positive death movement and the celebration of life and the celebration of death, um, How can we live our true selves and our true lives? I'm going to keep checking to this so I can stay, um, stay on point here. Um, so in the three months, and as the three months unfold, um, we're discovering the inner knowing, the desires, wants, needs, um, and so much more um, to help bring comfort and ease and to relax into life and enjoy the beauty that it has to offer. So not only is it a gift for yourself, um, it's a gift for your loved ones as well. It's, it's a plan to where when the time comes, there's this vision plan that the ones that we love can really fulfill the things that we're that we're looking for, that would really truly comfort us. And sometimes the things that would really truly comfort us um, isn't what our loved ones want for us. Um, and so having, having a plan to be like, this is what I want, like what a gift, what a gift that is, and to have that be honored and fulfilled. Um, and so that brings us into um, discovering our rite of passage. Um, a lot of the times in our culture, um, we're afraid of death, and it's something that isn't um, brought to the forefront um, of like talking about when, when I die. What do I want when I die? Or what do I not want? Which is also just as important, like what do I not want? What are my absolute no's? Um, and, uh, and to go, to go with grace and, and to be fulfilled. Like some people, um, love the comfort of a hospice center where there's doctors there and there is, um, palliative care and, um, feel very comforted knowing that the family is supported by a whole support group and others like to be at home um, and be with their animals and be um, in their room in a space that they've lived in for um, a long time um, and you know what kind of comforts um, to come to them and um, I've spoken with people that are like, I just want to be on the beach the whole time. <laughs> and when it, you know, when it comes time that I'm not able to take care of myself, just wheel me, wheel me to the beach and let me put my feet in the water and bathe me with the, with the ocean water. Um, and how, I mean, how beautiful is that? How beautiful is to like really fulfill your wants and your desires as you exit this, this reality, as you exit this, this bodily form. Um, so some examples. Everybody, everybody has their preferences and what really lights them up and what really fulfills them. Um, so discovering the rite of passage 
Um, this is, these are some questions I often ask when somebody asks me what I do. Do you, do you know someone who has had a supported, cared for, end of life experience? And what was that like? And how, what did you notice? Like, was it a fulfilling experience um, versus, a, versus an experience that was not a fulfilling experience? How does that leave the, the loved ones feeling in the community? Um, really, life essence as a whole. Um, and uh, have you considered what would be comforting um, for you during your process? That, that is a huge one. Um, some like comforting touch, some like sound. Um, some, you know, like are members of a community that really want them to gather and um, recite psalms, recite um, hymns, um, familiar rituals. Um, maybe they're involved in, in a group that they feel comforted by chanting. Um, what else? Oh gosh, there's just so many things. I mean, everything, it just, it starts to open up. Um, and also imagining the ability to voice what you want for yourself during this time um, and the support and the connection that you will receive. Um, imagining having an oil anointing at the very end of your, um, like in the 11th hour when you're ready to release from your body and smelling the oils for the very last time, how that might feel, how that might smell, like what kind of memories will that invoke? Um, and in this practice, um, I'll share a little bit about um, my journey with it um, whenever I was being anointed as I was practicing. Um, the smells were incredible. I just, I began to cry. I began to weep because they were so beautiful and I couldn't believe that I exist in a place that creates such a potent smell, such a, such beauty in this lifetime and that that was the last time in this body that I would ever smell those. It was really, really mind-blowing. Um, so, in this reality, in this realization, um, and in the weeks that will, that will follow, um, it gets broken up into body and um, emotional, bodily care, emotional care, mind, um, spiritual, and aftercare. Um, all right, so I have a few slides here. Um, that the first domain is um, the body. And the, in this domain, um, this is creating comfort, safety, and a healing environment. Um, so, yeah, again, what would you like to have in your space? What are the things that you would like to see and feel and smell? Who would you like to be there? Um, pets, animals, relatives, friends, loved ones. Um, would you like pieces of the natural world to come in? Would you like a whole array of flowers surrounding you? Um, or, you know, would you like to be in solitude? Um, really, again, it's, it's, everything is so personal. This program really helps boil down, one boil down to the essence of who they truly are and what they really value and cherish in this lifetime. Um, so some of the questions that are on here um, is, how would you like to be cared for physically? Where would you like to be during the last moments, weeks, days of your life? Um, how do you want support when, if physical goals become difficult? What do you want, what do you want them to know about you and them being your loved ones? Um, 
What types of um, pain symptoms management would you like to receive? Um, think of your ancestors and your health right now. How will you most likely die? What methods of physical care would you want administered? And which ones are clear you would not? Um, so creating comforting space. I'm going to look back. Oh, we don't have the, I'm sorry, you guys, um, the slideshow. Oh, OK. Um, no worries. That's good to know, because I keep looking at this, and there's, there's pictures and questions. So I'll, I'll disregard this. Um, OK, and then so um, in the emotional domain, um, this is a place of discovery for honoring your feelings and your relationships. Um, so this one is about your emotional state, recognizing how, um, recognizing how you process things and um, relationships that you have as well. Um, thinking about um, are there relationships in your life that are nourishing? Are there relationships in your life that um, you're holding on to that may, may not be nourishing? Are they ready to be released? Um, are there relationships that you would like to repair um, before your final days um, and mend? And are there relationships that you would like to enhance in your life? Um, Finding forgiveness. Forgiveness is a big one as well. Forgiveness for oneself, forgiveness for others. Um, I went to speak with my mom about this one, and um, it was really um, challenging for me to reach out to my mother. And I knew this was a relationship that I wanted to mend. I knew this was a relationship that it was super important for me to have before I pass through this lifetime. And having her be a part of my ritual um, was really important for me. And um, during this plan, um, you know, this is something that was really important for me. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. And my coach asked me, like, okay, when are you going to connect with your mother? And I was like, oh, okay, um, I'll connect with her in, like, a month. And she was like, are you sure you want to wait a month before you pass? That only gives you two, that only gives you two months <laughs> to really get, you know, to do what you need to do in order to, f to feel complete. Um, before you pass. And I was like, yeah, you're right. Okay, I don't want this to linger for another month. So I'll call my mom on Sunday when she gets home from church and have a conversation with her. And so I did. And um, she was open to it and at the same time to a certain point. And then she didn't want to talk about it. She didn't want to think about it. She didn't want to think about her baby dying. And she definitely didn't want to think about washing, <laughs> washing her baby <laughs> after she passed away. And, and, the, and she also um, was having a hard time facing um, the difficulties, the, the friction, the fluctuations that we have in our relationship. And so it was a huge lesson for me to honor where she, where she was in her process as well, um, and to honor where I am in my process, and to understand that there is a natural unfolding to this by simply coming to her and being like, hey, mom, this is really important to me, and this is what I would love to have, um, really help to plant a seed and allow that seed to grow and begin to blossom. Um, and it actually blossomed quick, quite quickly after it settled in, and I, you know, gave her space and time, and she was like, okay, I'm ready. Um, 
which was tremendous. It was a tremendous experience, and it continues on to this day. So the plan really set a foundation for this flowering to, to happen. And um, yeah, I don't know if she's ready to wash me, but I feel comforted knowing that she has given me a yes, and my mother's hands will be washing my body um, before I'm put back into the earth. Um, so, yeah, and, and my emotions through um, going through this were all over the place. Um, I felt really deep, intense grief um, navigating this. Um, I was going through a divorce, and I had four kiddos with, I, I didn't have them, but they were my bonus children, um, and I was losing connection with them. And my daughter is um, coming into her teenage years, and she's also discovering herself. And so I felt really alone. And I was like, wow, like my whole life was wrapped around this idea of a family and that I was going to be supported and um, cared for and loved. And here I found myself very singular and feeling very alone and thinking like, wow, who can I reach out to? to trust, to fulfill these desires and, and, um, and needs, really, for me during this time in my life of passing. And um, it sparked a whole, a whole new thing of connection with community and reaching out to people that I didn't think I would reach out to, but they just came to me of like, oh yes, this person would be perfect for this, and this person would be perfect for that, or maybe I can ask this person to drum for me, and I can ask this person to hold space and gather all the fruit for the celebration and things like that. And finding community in this was um, a tremendous growth as well. So sometimes the ones that we love and expect for us to be there are not necessarily the ones that show up for us. Um, during this time. Uh, and so that was a huge realization for me personally um, in my journey. Um, and the next domain is the mind. Um, so this is legacy of life review. So we start to get into the celebration of life. And this one is a wonderful domain to be in. This really helps for um, looking at the span of our life, of what it has already been and what we've accomplished, what we are proud of, what is our most like shining moment in our life, and whether we came here, set out on a path to, um, you know, to come and be and do the things that we're set here to do, or whether, whether we're, you know, floaters and let life happen. Like, wow, I did this. Oh, yeah, I did that. And like seeing the legacy build, seeing what we have done with our life um, during this time so far can be really amazing, uh, inspirational, um, and, um, and eye-opening, um, and doing uh, the legacy work, too, um, like doing projects of putting pictures together um, and really, really seeing ourselves for who we truly are and, and what we've been. That one, it seems to be, that one seems to be a really fun one. Um, there is a spiritual domain, um, and... All, this is honoring beliefs and practices. All belief systems are honored and welcome. Um, I don't work with just one specific belief system. I feel like our belief systems are a very comforting um, piece of our lives and are very important for us. And um, in our belief systems, there comes um, support. There comes ritual. Um, I think a feeling of safety, a feeling of community, a feeling um, of belonging. So all belief systems are honored and um, also creating our own rituals too. Um, thinking like, wow, I would really like to have this done, or I'd really like candles to be lit, and I would really like these songs to be sung, and 
um, I'd really like to be um, bathed and touched and um, or what or whatever 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 sounds good and those having those belief systems coming through um, to support us um, and then practical care this is honoring the body after death there are so many non-traditional options out there today which is amazing um, I went to the funeral home here in town and they, ga they gave me a tour to see, you know, like the caskets and like what does a traditional burial um, consist of? And I learned the process of that and I was like, wow, this is fascinating. And then they also have um, wicker baskets and they have shrouds. Um, I discovered that the um, cemetery here in town has a green burial site um, which allows us to be put directly into the earth with no chemicals at all, um, which is amazing. That's great to have. There's composting, there's um, water cremation, there's cremation, and so many, um, so many options for us to really honor um, how we would like our body to be cared for. And to think about... Um, to think about touch and to think about um, what is the gift we can give to the ones that we love after our, after our bodies are long gone. And some of these are like, oh, like writing letters to loved ones and having, appointing somebody to disperse those letters like three months after death or a year after death and how we can continue to touch our loved ones in our community long after we're gone by thinking uh, by thinking ahead of time um, and also to be a part of that process um, for me washing my body is very important um, through videos um, i have witnessed and seen um, the uh, the family and the loved ones participating in washing the body and how healing it is for the for the grieving process of the loved ones that are here to process the grieving, to process the passing, um, because we're not in it alone. When we pass, we're not alone. There's, uh, there's a whole, there's a whole encompassing realm that sometimes we're not tapped into until we get to that point to understand that there's so much comfort there in the continuation and the comfort and release that happens with everybody involved. Um, so who shows up during this time, during this energetic veil, veil if you will, this energetic opening, if you will, um, is touched by it and um, can, is very healing for everybody. Um, so really diving into that, like what does that look like? I know this is a lot of information, and I know this is a lot to wrap um, wrap around and taking it slowly, um, breath by breath, foot footstep in front of footstep, um, and looking at our path in front of us, um, and walking together. I'll I'll be there with you every step of the way to to be with your laughter, your cries, your tears, your discovery, um, and um, also to help coach you. Um, this is what you put into it is what you get back. And I am here as a coach to cheer you on, to show, uh, to open up opportunities, um, to help discover and explore. I am learning so much um, as a coach in this as well. Um, you know, somebody's like, well, can I do this? Or, you know, can I be, can I, uh, can my family just put me, you know, in this prop piece of property? Like I have this wonderful spot and like discovering what the legalities of that is and really making that, really making that come true, really, really seeing what the legalities are. Um, and then also diving into like material things, financial things, power of attorney, all of that sort of stuff, um, help invoking that and being like, oh yeah, who do I want to take care of this and being able to delegate things um, at the end of life. Um, and so it's my honor. It's my honor to see pieces of people and 
um, to see what like truly lights people up and to see the comfort that comes with having thought this through. Um, there, I feel like there's an ease that comes to it of like, oh, okay. I know what I want and it's all here and I have this community supporting me. I can rest and relax and all I have left to do is live. <laughs> and how, how does that look? Like, how am I going to live? What am I, what am I going to do with this wonderful, this wonderful existence? Hmm. Thank you for listening so attentively. I appreciate you all. Um, now I am open for questions and comments. Um, and anything else that's ready to be expressed or shared? Yes. Okay, so like uh, assisted, assisted death. Yes, um, I, I honor all belief systems. And as far as the states go, there are some states that allow it. I believe Washington is a state that um, allows that. Um, and I also learned about um, voluntary stopping of eating and drinking at the end of life. Uh, it's called V-SED, and there are videos out there that, um, wonderful videos out there that you can watch um, to see people going through the process of what that's like. I think initially we think like, oh man, that sounds horrible, um, and actually experiencing and witnessing this is beautiful um, when, it, when it's supported. Um, it could still be supported with meds for comfort, of course, um, and then other other procedures as well with the the loved ones around you as time comes. Generally, when there's a diagnosis, um, it, it's roughly seven to fourteen days. The process of voluntary stopping and eating um, it takes about seven to fourteen days. Some earlier than that. The body really releases when it's ready. Thank you for asking that question. Yeah. Um, sure, at any time in life. Um, so I, I went through the best three months, and that is, it's, my plan is there, and uh, my three months have come and gone, and I'm still here. So it changes, it ebbs and it flows. So um, anybody, um, at any age, um, six-year-olds, teenagers, 20-year-olds, 30-year-olds, 50-year-olds, you know, and then people who are really um, on their on their best three months um, at any time. Um, you do it as a planning process, not just a through end of life process. 
Right. Yeah, yeah. The best three months. Yeah, it's a pre a pre plan, a pre visionary plan. Um, yes, and then as a doula, in, yeah, stepping in at any given time um, to to be there. And I think you made a really good point of um, the V said as far as you know, like trying it, and then you know, it's all about choice, and that's really the best three months is bringing choice, bringing that rite of passage. Um, and I believe that when somebody decides, they, when somebody themselves decides that they're ready for V said, um, it's a it's a decision made from within, not from others being like, this is what we would like for you, which is super important. And um, I'm really happy that that person honored where they were and they tried it and was like, well, actually, this is comforting. Um, and that's really what it's all about, having a plan and improving because everything is unknown. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, the There's so many moving parts that you bring up. You talked about the yes. Oh, I really want to do this poem. But that means you have to have a 24 hour care, caretaker. It's not everybody comes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of moving parts, so I can see a role like you would have to be help, helpful in helping all those different people coordinate. Do you end up working like with a group of people, or are you more individually with the person with the three-month plan? Sure, individually with the person with the three-month plan. Um, yeah, and those um, moving parts. So in the plan, it's three months, like it really wrapping so let's see, what is today? Today is May, May 19th. Um, so June, July, August. So August 19 is my death day. And I make that my reality. Um, and then walk through, the, walk through the program of like, oh, okay. So for example, um, August 19th, I will have, I will die from liver failure and what what would I like to have done for me? What do I want to do right away? And the first thing that comes to mind is like, do I want to work? Do I not want to work? Do I want to um, travel? Um, do I want to spend time with my family? Do I want to start writing letters? And um, do I want to make amends with um, people in my life that feel it feels really important for me to make amends with? Um, how do I want to celebrate? What do I want to eat? What do I want to dance to? Um, what do I need to tell this person right now? Um, it flips a switch. It really flips a switch and helps to be in the present moment and helps to be like, for me, so grateful, so grateful. I, even in this space right here with you all is so wonderful and so alive. I'm so happy to be here. And um, yeah, and going from there and then thinking about like, okay, um, what would feel good to my body after I die to have done? You know, and to kind of in, to embody that, not kind of, but to embody that and to actually have that happen. And I started reaching out to people and asked them. I was like, okay, I'm doing the best three months plan, and um, I would love for you to drum for me. Will you drum for me? Um, and I would love for you to wash my body. Will you wash my body for me? And, oh, oh, yeah, um, can you buy all the fruit that you can afford with this allotment that I have sitting here. And people were like, Brooke, are you okay? <laughs> are you dying? And I was like, no, no, no. Well, I am on August, August 19th. <laughs> um, so it really brought, you know, and it affected so many people. Like it really brought awareness to so many people in my life of like, oh, wow, she's really thinking about this. And oh, wow, like I'm honored to do that. And there were some people in my life that were like, absolutely not. I am not comfortable with that. 
which was heartbreaking and at the same time uh, so eye-opening to actually to find a channel, to find a person that will, that will do that. Um, so I don't know if I'm answering your question, but yes, it's a one-on-one -on -one basis. I prefer to start now with the best three months plan, and that way when the time does come as a doula, um, I'm, a, I'm a space holder. And then, yes, I do start working with the family as well of like these, these, are, your, these are the loved one's wishes. These, this is the dying's wishes. Um, you know, can we, can we stick to these wishes and then help the family navigate through emotional unfolding um, in the processes of unfolding and the grief that comes with it? And much like a birth doula, where they work months in advance um, for when the time comes. I'm also a patient person advocate too, because oftentimes what they're doing is for them feeling well and having you know their inner light, body image keeping self clean and all of that. And as a nurse, that's what nurses are always taught to do. But oftentimes they don't have time. Yeah. Yes, yeah, uh, death doula, bridging the gap, bridging the gap for all, yeah. Mm, yes. You can create a ceremony, yes. And um, there is a vision plan, so I'll have, I'll be gathering all of this information, and, um, and then at the very end, I will have this beautiful plan written out of, um, of what you would, what you would want. Um, and yes, having ritual and celebration, I would be honored and love to hold space for that and help create that. Yeah, um, some uh, like to do a living wake uh, as well, where um, just like ready, like yeah, on that death date. Like, yeah, is that what you're in? Yeah. I was just curious if, that, if that's something that ends up happening or is a part of the process, or I think you were talking earlier about uh, that you had a ceremony and were anointed. I don't know if like yeah. you, if if that's what you were referring to, was your own, uh, when you were talking about the smell and, and whatnot. Yeah, that was just a little portion of the uh, Conscious Dying Institute program. And we went through many of things. We said goodbye to our hands. We said goodbye to our body. We had all these little practices to um, practice dying and what that might be like. Um, Having a living wake would be wonderful. Having a ceremony, having some sort of ritual. It's so individual. Like whatever lights you up and fulfills, fulfills that piece for you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I've got a difficult question, I think. Oh, well, hello. I've got a difficult question, I think. Uh, you mentioned the oils and your senses and how much comforting that would be. And it was almost like you're getting inspiration from past lives, regression, so to speak. Is that possible? Is that what's happening to a degree? It is possible. Um, past life regression, ancestral knowledge, um, the mystery and magic of death and dying is, is wonderful and powerful and so personal. But is it because you've been there and done that that you, your inside says, this is the way I want to celebrate? Do you think mm -hmm. that's part quite, of it? Quite possibly, yeah. Yeah. Me personally, I'm going to answer this question very personally. Mm. Yes. Most definitely. Thank you for answering that. Many times over. 
So you have, how do you feel that you know this? Is that a too personal a question? No, I'm okay answering that question. Oh, man. Uh, as a little girl, I've always been fascinated with death. Um, I grew up in the country, and I would collect animal bones and, of course, experienced animals passing quite often. Um, I was very fortunate to be in a family of several women, mostly all women, um, and we all care for each other. And I was there for several of my relatives in passing and saw how they were cared for and tended to um, and the process of dying. Um, and then as life goes on, I had a couple of near-death experiences and also chose to participate in plant medicine that helped for my, having an ego death. Um, so um, I've had several ego deaths, and um, I feel, uh, especially on my last journey, my last vision quest that I had, um, I was given the most beautiful death, and I was able to experience and embody the most I've ever felt somebody um, help guiding my, my essence onward. Thank you. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry, I don't know where an ego death is. You don't know any what, what things? An ego death? Oh, ego death. Yeah, so there is plant medicine out there that sends us on a, a journey out of, out of body, a vision quest out of body. Um, and there is a death. There is a, a place in this journey where there becomes a surrendering. Um, and this can be a whole nother topic, um, especially with um, psychedelics and palliative care mm. in psychedelics. Mm. Um, mm. That's, and in this um, experience, there is a place that, um, especially with ayahuasca, um, there is a place in the mind where it, it, it surrenders and it dies and then one thinks that they are dead. Like, it, it's almost this fight, that's almost this, for me personally, it's this fighting experience. I'm wrestling and I'm fighting and I, and I don't want to let go and I, I have this thought here and I have that thought there and, and, um, and, the, and ayahuasca is calling me, is calling me, is calling me to surrender. And finally, I get so tired of fighting, and I'm so tired of holding on to all of these things. I surrender, and I say, okay, <sighs> I'm ready. And I die, and then I wake up, and I realize here I am in this body. Here I am in this world. Here I am in this experience and reborn with that, like the ego shatters and parts of me are dead and gone and the new, the newness is, is allowed to thrive. It really opened me up, changed my life. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome, thank you for asking. Oh yes. Hi, um, I am also a death doula, but I work with people that have critically died instantly and they don't know what they're doing and they're walk it's like walking around in a, you're in a space that has walls and you don't know why you're there or what you're supposed to do next. I work with babies, I work with old people, it doesn't make any difference. I've done this for 30 years, it came to me, I was in a, I was in a group of people, of hundreds of people, and this woman turned to me and she says, oh, you're a death doula. And I said, I don't know what you're talking about. She says, well, somebody's trying to get a hold of you right now. And it happened, and it was like, 
anymore. <laughs> but I, I've learned from it, so much from it, you know, because death isn't always wonderful and sl you don't slide into it. Sometimes you go crashing and burning into it. Um, and you're, you're confused. You don't know where you are. You don't know why you're here. You're 14 years old, and it's like, why? Well, I'm only 14 years old. Why am I dead? What's going on? Where's mom and dad? What's my name? You know, so I work with people like that, and, and I love it. But I love this, and I am so on board with this <laughs> mm. <laughs> because it's, I'm 73 years old. I've had 39, I've had 39 surgeries. My heart is a machine. I don't have a belly button. <laughs> I mean, I have been a science project since I was born. So I just, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the slide, the time where I can just say, enough is enough. Mm. And you're it. Mm. You're it for me. And so I'm so grateful because it's hard to walk around in a shell, you know? It's hard to be somebody that you don't know who you are one day to the next. And I love doing, I love being a doula. I love being a doula. I've worked with birth, I've worked with death. It's so important, you know? But I'm also tired, you know? So. I'm very excited to be part of your program, mm. and I will do whatever you want me to do, and whatever, whenever, however. I'm very grateful. I, I, I asked my wife, I said, is this something I need to hear? And she says, I think it is. I think it is. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I am, too. I'm honored. Thank you so much oh, for sharing. I'm so Thank you.
Yes, thank you. And it's amazing to hear that Betty is a chaplain in life and in death. Like, we didn't know this about her. So this is amazing information. But to Betty's point about um, souls jumping off, I, in my personal life, I've literally known, like, five people who have died in, like, the past five days. Um, and, you know, I just thank you so much, Brooke, for coming and sharing this message. I think it's given so much of us food for thought. And like Betty is saying, you know, I, I love this and I love the idea of conscious living and, and making this pre-plan. But with that said, um, you know, we do not know the time and the hour. And so in my life right now, it's, it's many people who... You know, maybe, maybe they weren't in the best of health, but it wasn't an anticipated death. Most of them were sudden. And so I just wondered if you had any um, guidance or wisdom for those of us who are left behind, who, you know, it's it's kind of a shock. We didn't have this preparation like we're talking about. Yes. Yeah, of course. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, and my my heart to your heart and the tenderness that is there. Um, grieving, bringing um, community grieving together. Um, I do community grieving rituals. Uh, I just had the first one out at um, Paul Rudy's at Harmony Farm. Um, it was, yeah, last Sunday, I believe. It's um, I call it Walk Two Fires. And this is holding space for, for those of us that are in grief. Um, and <laughs> it's going to be a whole nother talk of like the kind of grief that we carry. Um, grief of loss of loved ones, um, personal grief, ancestral grief, um, grief of the world, grief of the earth, um, grief of what we expected and never received, body parts, identities, homes, um, loss, like loss that provokes grief and what that experience is like and identifying grief. Um, to know it's okay to be with grief, to know it's okay to just stop and be with the feelings, be with the emotions, um, to be with the processes. Grandmother grief, she's strong, and she calls every single part of us to be with it. Um, and to, to have that expression in community and to be held and to have um, a tangible ritual to, to bring physicality to the process of grieving with the earth supporting us um, outside with the land, with the trees, with the animals, with the plants, with the spirits, um, with the souls, um, I feel is in, it's um, fertile ground for healing for all. I think it's really important. There's so much to be grieving right now. There's so much shifting happening um, consciously, environmentally, um, it's, it's the great unknown. We're in the great unknown and a huge shift and we're all in it together. We're all in it together. Will you be having that community grieving event again? And is it something that's open to the public? Yes. Yeah, um, on the website, redrootswellness.com, I list all the events that I'm having. Um, I do sound journeys, um, soul traveling, uh, walking to fires, which is the grief gathering, um, and then various other things that tend to call. Great, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Anyone 
anyone else? Question, share? Well, I guess we're, we're done, if Wonderful. you are. Yes, thank you all. Thank I appreciate you. you. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to resist giving a plug out to Willie Nelson who says, roll me up and smoke me when I die. <laughs> <laughs> That probably doesn't fit your program. I, don't know. I guess it could <laughs> be an option. All belief systems. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to show. So, where, where do we go from here? Are we meeting sure. regularly? Because you said you were working on an individual basis. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, it's a one on one basis, um, a six to eight week program. Um, and it would be one on one. I am able to work with. Um, a certain amount of people at one given time. Um, so you would connect with me and okay. yeah, and okay. we can talk also on um, the website, Red Roots Wellness, it's on the card. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's pricing and things like that right. on there as well. Um, but yeah, I, I would love to hear from you if you have any more questions and would like to work together. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh, thank you. All right, everyone. Uh, next month, uh, I, I forget, I think it's the 9th, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, Cindy uh, Whitmore is going to give a presentation about her, her work. Uh, in, uh, she's a life coach. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I just have to say, I think it's very beautiful the, the very last thing you said, um, you know, like uh, death is kind of scary. There's a lot of fear and dread and, and, you know, and I think a lot of us dread the actual process more than the actual transition. But the idea of, of creating this, this beautiful event around your, your final time is, is such wisdom to that. It's just really a beautiful concept to just say, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to go through this process like everybody else, but I've got it set up in a way that it's, it, you can look forward to it. Almost, almost really kind of, you know, not dread it. Get rid of that fear and that dread. It's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Mm, thank you. All right, thank everyone. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, I'll see some of you tomorrow. So, uh, anyhow, vaya con Dios. Mm. <laughs>